On today's That Park Place Daily Countdown, Wish becomes the fifth box office flop for Disney this year. Tim Allen tells us all how he would do Toy Story 5. OpenAI, Sam Altman, and Microsoft battle for control of ChatGPT. The author of The Witcher novels confirms that Netflix ignored him, and Universal Studios announces a new roller coaster from a tram. All that on today's That Park Place. Good morning, everyone. This is Jonas J. Campbell, and uh, with me, as always, is Vash Sky. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Welcome to That Park Place. Vash, did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did have a good Thanksgiving. You know, we always do the the, the, the brown brown gravy over the mashed potatoes right there, some good old stuffing. Oh, man, I love it. Thank you so I much know. for asking. Our good friend uh, WDW Pro asked us if we ever put white gravy on mashed potatoes, and I'm sorry, uh, that only goes on biscuits, buddy. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you, man. And you put it on the sausage on the biscuits to the point where you don't know if the sausage is actually part of the white gravy. Anyways, uh, moving on from all this nostalgia for the last uh, three days of Thanksgiving feasting here in the United States, um, let's get on to all of the news in entertainment, streaming, theme parks, and video games here at That Park Place. That should be fun. Number one. Hey, this is Jonas J. Campbell with your first story. This one out of That Park Place. Our new editor-in-chief, John Trent, has graced us with this headline, Disney's wish collapses at the Thanksgiving box office, underperforming even the worst projections by 50%. Just in case you weren't aware, the Walt Disney Company's latest animated film, Wish, collapsed at the box office, failing to hit even the lowest of low projections for the film. Through Friday, the film only grossed 20 million over the Thanksgiving weekend. It took in 2.3 million in Tuesday during previews. On Wednesday before Thanksgiving, it only raked in 8.3 million. Thanksgiving Day, it took in 3.9 million, and on Friday after Thanksgiving, it took in eight. Just to condense that into one easy to swallow image, uh, the domestic box office for Wish is $31.7 billion, with uh, $17.3 million coming from overseas. Total box office take of $50 million. Obviously, Disney takes in a lot less when it comes to the international box office. In order to get a better understanding of this, uh, the entire theatrical run for Strange World took in just about $38 million. And if you look at the opening weekend, that one made about $18 million. So I guess Wish did do a better job at the box office than Strange World, although that's probably not a metric that anyone at the Walt Disney Company is happy to see today. I've watched Wish and Strange World now, and I'd say those box office figures probably need to be flipped. But I'd rather know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. Number two. Hello, this is John Trent, the editor-in-chief at That Park Place. Comments. Today, I got a story about Tim Allen sharing what he hopes to see in Toy Story 5. Here, this is over at thatparkplace.com. So let's get into this here. Allen shared his personal and off the cuff thoughts in an interview with the movie dweeb on YouTube while promoting his Disney Plus show, The Santa Claus. This is what he had to say. This is really off the cuff. It made me very emotional because a guy, I went to get coffee at a very small little coffee bar that he grinds his own coffee, asked me the same question just yesterday. And I said, I don't know this is where the story is going. But what if the whole story was through Andy is an adult, has children, and they just happen to be online. And the kid goes, have you ever seen this toy? And Andy sees that Buzz has got a hand missing and they're selling these vintage toys. And Andy goes and gathers all the toys up and he has to go out and find each one of them and put them back together, bring them back to his house and starts the whole thing over again with his son. And I said, what a wonderful idea is that he brings it. It's all through Andy's eyes because we made his life and now he's returning that favor. So that is what Tim Allen had to say about Toy Story 5. And Toy Story 5 is indeed coming. It was announced back in February by the Walt Disney Company CEO, Bob Iger, during the company's Q1 earnings call. He said, today, I'm so pleased to announce that we have sequels in the works from our animation studios to some of our most popular franchises, Toy Story, Frozen, and Zootopia. He added, we'll have more to share about these productions soon, but this is a great example of how we're learning or leaning into our unrivaled brands and franchises. Alan announced he was returning to voice Buzz Lightyear soon after Iger's announcements writing on X. See you soon, Woody. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. And off we go to a number five, to infinity and beyond. So that is what Tim Allen had to say about what he hopes to see in Toy Story 5, especially with Buzz Lightyear. Number three. Hi folks, it's CC here today for That Park Place. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know that from time to time, I cover stories on AI streaming and the business side of entertainment. But today I would like to take 90 seconds and break down some super strange happenings at the most well-known AI foundry, OpenAI. You see, OpenAI is the provider of ChatGPT in its various iterations, among other sandbox AI tools like Dolly, etc. For a long while now, they enjoyed a leadership position in the industry, largely due to the fact that their leader was always pushing AI forward with a cadre of minds that just approach things differently. 
That leader in this innovation was Sam Altman. In one of the strangest news cycles on record in this century, Sam Altman was fired from his CEO position because the company's board of directors thought that he wasn't forthcoming enough about the work he was doing. True or not, they just elected to get rid of him. Then over the next 72 hours, things changed rapidly. You see, at OpenAI, the staffing went into full revolt. OpenAI president Greg Brockman quit in solidarity with Altman's termination, leaving OpenAI with a huge gulf in leadership. Employees began circulating a letter demanding the board's resignation, and things just further deteriorated from there. At the same time, seeing an opportunity to pounce on a quick gain advantage, Microsoft offered Altman a job and also offered positions to the 700 employees at OpenAI as well. Altman at that time reportedly took the job with Microsoft. Then, last Monday, the newly announced interim CEO for OpenAI, Emmett Shear, initiated an investigation into the dismissal of Altman. The chaos reached a fever pitch due to lack of transparency by the board of OpenAI. Heavy pressure was put on those board members to resign or else risk the company becoming a total loss. On Wednesday, it was all over. Altman and Brockman were both back at OpenAI, and a new board slate was impaneled, and Emmett Shear was describing his short tenure as an intense 72 hours of work. At the end of the day, in my opinion, this fast developing story does place additional scrutiny over the governance of AI development and, at the very least, would suggest even greater transparency is needed in the future. But hey, what do you think? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Number four. Hello everybody, Tommy Tables here. Let's talk about The Witcher today, that little franchise that could, that ended up being mired in all sorts of controversy after Netflix got its grubby little paws on it. So it started off as a book series by the author Andrzej Sapkowski, and I know I said that wrong, ended up becoming a series of video games and ultimately was picked by Netflix for a live action adaptation. What was even better was the fact that they cast Henry Cavill, uh, AKA the former Superman, as the lead star, Geralt of Rivia. The show quickly went off the rails even before it was aired. It was quite obvious from the writer's room, which was headed up by Lauren Hisrich, that they were gonna be deviating from the source material. It has apparently just been a significant battle between the writers and Henry Cavill himself. And this all sort of culminated with Henry Cavill deciding to leave the franchise after the third season which has just aired to be replaced by Liam Hemsworth for the season the fourth season uh, which will be airing who knows when at a recent Vienna Comic Con the author uh, Andrzej Sapkowski was asked about whether Netflix ever listened to any of his ideas for the hit adaptation he replied with a laugh Maybe I gave them some ideas, but they never listened to me, but it's normal. He then broke into an impression of a Netflix executive and said dismissively, who's this? It's a writer, it's nobody. So Netflix obviously didn't have any comment on these remarks. However, um, this sort of lines up with what we've kind of known for quite a while. Uh, Bo DeMaio, who was one of the show's writers on his first two seasons, had been had said on Instagram, I've been on a show, namely The Witcher, where some of the writers were not or actively disliked the books and games, even actively mocking the source material. It's a recipe for disaster and bad morale. Fandom as a litmus test checks egos and makes all the losing long nights worth it. You have to respect the work before you're allowed to add to its legacy. All that to be said, I don't really understand why studios do this. Why invest millions of dollars into a product only to throw away the fundamental parts of it, which um, made it popular in the first place. Let us know your thoughts down below. Number five. Vast guy here with the next story, this time from Universal Core on Twitter. Our studio tour guide mentioned that a quote, Fast and Furious coaster will be opening late next year. This is very interesting because I believe this is the first official acknowledgement from anywhere uh, related to Universal on this coaster and a late next year date. That's very interesting. I wouldn't be giving the story if it was just that though. Uh, I did check with my sources and confirm that that is indeed the timeline they are working with. And you can actually see right here via Ryan Theme Park that they are very very busy in uh, digging out the trenches for this and actually uh, putting together the land uh, that'll be used for this actual uh, attraction right here. You can see the foundations are already in place. And not only that, but uh, they're actually delivering surveys. This comes to us via Universal Core related to 
this attraction, specifically what happens to their current Fast and the Furious attraction. So you can see right here, as you may or may not know, Universal Studios is building a new Fast and Furious themed roller coaster. What should Universal do with the Fast and Furious segment on the Studio Tour when the new ride opens? Should it be replaced? Should it be uh, updated and remain? Or should it remain as is? This is very, very interesting because it not only says to me that Universal is willing to deliver a brand new attraction in the form of this roller coaster, but they're also willing to deliver a updated version of the attraction they currently have. So this is very good news for us Universal fans. Are you excited? Let us know in the comments below. Alrighty, that is the end of another day here on That Park Place. Uh, be sure to tune in this afternoon. We usually have a video at 4 p.m. every single day, but tomorrow we're having a live stream at 10 a.m. We call it TPP Live right now. I think sometime uh, soon we're probably going to rename that, start the whole thing over, already reboot it. Uh, I guess we're like a uh, a superhero company like DC Studios or Marvel, and where we just reboot things constantly. Um, but in the meantime, go over there. We'll be having all that same news coverage, but we get to dive in a little deeper. Of course, uh, hit the like button if you like this video. Consider sharing it out on social media and uh, subscribe to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.